What's going on everyone? This is Vangelis 2019. Have you ever looked at these figurines and thought, geez, that would look great in my place? And then you have a little look at the price tag and you think, um, maybe not. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make your very own Iron Man using a little bit of creativity, so a handful of materials and a $12 toy from the supermarket. Okay, so here we are with the, uh, the old Iron Man model. This is the one I got from the supermarket it was just twelve dollars so uh let's just go ahead and unbox it i'm not even gonna bother taking the box apart i'm just gonna snip all the little tags here <clears throat> one more all right there is our old glory Okay, one thing I noticed immediately, I was thinking about what kind of LEDs or whatever to put into the hands and the, the arc reactor and the eyes, and I've just realized this fist is actually closed, so I don't even need to do anything with that one. So uh, a couple of options for some poses, something like that I was thinking. So let's have a look what kind of... Yes, this might be a bit of a problem. There aren't really any screws or anything to open this up with, so this might be a little bit of a problem trying to get this guy open. I think there might be uh, might be some issues actually trying to open this guy up. So, um, yes, I think this may be one of those jobs where I don't put any light in it at all. It might just be simply a, a custom paint job. Which, uh, yeah, they'll still look pretty awesome, but yeah, it's a little bit disappointing I couldn't put any light in it because, yeah, that's I think I'm just gonna ruin it if I just try and take a little Dremel or something to it and sort of buzz cut the whole thing up. And I think I'm gonna create more work than is actually gonna be worth it for the whole point of this exercise. So, um, yeah, all right, on with the next bit. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the products I'm going to be using to um, to do this model. Um, okay, one of the first things uh, I've got them on a little turntable here, so you can see better. One of the first things I need to do is actually start filling like these holes. So he's got one in his forearm. There's one in the middle of his back, and on the other forearm. So I've got to fill those. Now, a lot of fine scale models will actually use. Um, products that are you know obviously made for fine scale modelers but I always tend to find that these products tend to be in very small quantities at a very high price so what I try to do whenever I can is just kind of use products that you just find in the DIY store so you know this kind of um, two-part polymer repair compound you can use car body filler basically any kind of um, substance that comes in a decent quantity at a decent price um, and actually dries um, pretty quickly and dries hard enough that you can sand it down again afterwards so um, yeah I try to use products like that okay next product is um, basically to prepare the surface so as you can see this um, this model is pretty I think it's ABS plastic uh, it's pretty shiny um, yeah so uh, <laughs> Once you paint something like this, the paint will stick to it, but you know, there are going to be places where it could just peel off or chip off. So you're much better off preparing the surface to receive paint better. And there's nothing better than a little bit of wire wool, super fine quality, because obviously we don't want to scratch the surface too much. We, um, you know, we don't have to, we don't want to have to give it like several coats of paint to hide scratches. So I'd use a super fine quality. Okay, next up is the paint. So um, uh, this is, uh, I just basically, I just Googled metallic red paint and several products came up. Uh, this was just available in my local DIY store. This was $15 Australian. Um, so yeah, this is probably the biggest financial investment uh, over and above the model itself. All right, so once you've got your primary color on, what you need to do then is to mask off the areas that you want your secondary color. So um, I've actually got some of this. This is just regular painter's tape from the DIY store. 
I actually bought this one because I realized that the masking tape that I actually use for painting is the kind of stuff where you can't really leave it um, very long. It's got a you know, quite a high adhesion. So what you don't want to happen is when you peel off your masking tape, you don't want your first coat of paint to come off. So always pay attention. This is 60 day low adhesion. So it's good for masking things off. And because it's not that tacky, it won't actually pull your paint off. Okay, once everything is masked off, then you want your secondary color. So um, I'm actually using this White Knight Super Gold. Now, I, I haven't actually tested um, these two paints together, and I haven't tested them against the model itself. So they always say test in an inconspicuous area. So what I'll do is I'll probably um, brush a little bit on to the underside of his feet and uh, uh, yeah just see how they react together how they react with the model so just before we start talking about um, the actual um, paint job that i'm gonna give this model i'll just quickly um, mention um just regular liquid shoe polish black liquid shoe polish the kind of the kind that's got the spongy bit at the top there um if you're absolutely doing this on a budget one of the best things you can do is actually just take a model as it is, give it a good dabbing with the liquid shoe polish, and then take a piece of kitchen roll and wipe off the excess. And what you'll find is the, the black liquid shoe polish will actually go into all the deep parts, all the crevices, all the little lines, and your model will actually look 10 times better without any extra paint or any, you know, Basically, it's the cheapest way you can actually take a, a simple model like this and make it look 10 times better. Just simple black shoe polish. As an example of how well um, just a little bit of um, black shoe polish wiped off um, makes a model look a lot better. Here's, a, here's an R2-D2 I did. Uh, you can see he's all nicely weathered there. Um, this isn't actually a model, it's a, it's a poppet. But a little bit of weathering makes him look like he could be a fine scale model. And I also did the same thing with this uh, Rogue One Ewing. So you can see where the shoe polish is in all the little lines and the, the nooks there, whereas this was actually quite a, a plain white model when I started. But could, looks like it could be one of the tabletop um, game figures. Okay, well what I've done just now is actually go over all of the seams here. So I've got a, a Swiss needle file, which uh, I've always got a bunch of these, um, but um, you can use any old kind of emery board that you'd use for doing your nails to do that. So I've just gone over all his seams there. I've just taken off all the kind of obvious joins and welds in his suit. That will give a much better smoother finish when once we're done. Oh Maddie, you shouldn't have done this in the studio. You should have done that in the shed. Okay, so I'm out in my little workshop now. Sorry, the light's not very good in here, but um, yeah, basically I'm just gonna use my um, super fine wire wall and then basically, yeah, just go over the model and essentially just take the shine off it. Alrighty, so I've got one Freshly sanded Iron Man, he's kind of lost nearly all of his shine. Maybe the very depths of the nooks and crannies are still a bit shiny, but that's good enough. So next job now is to start filling all these holes in. So I've got my, my two-part filler here. Um, the product does actually say to wear gloves, and seeing as I've never used it before, I'm actually going to take that advice. I've got some gloves here. So, um, yep, on with the next bit.
Okay, so basically what I want is for the filled part to just be ever so slightly proud of the actual surface of the model so that I can then sand it down perfectly flush and hopefully be very difficult to spot where the join is. Okay, that's only sticking up by about a millimeter, I don't know. That will do. Alright, so I'm probably just going to allow this to dry for 24 hours to make sure it goes off completely. I want it nice and hard so I can sand it off.
All right, I reckon that will do it for now. It's actually best to do these things in several light coats rather than one heavy coat. So all right, I'll leave him dry overnight and we'll see how we look in the morning. Okay, so I've gone through my uh, reference photos and I've kind of, I pretty much know which parts I'm gonna turn into the gold areas and which part I'm gonna have as the kind of silvery kind of steel color. So the next job is to um, take my roll of uh, masking tape here and um, cut it into kind of roughly three or five millimeter strips and um, yeah, start masking. All right. Alrighty, here, uh, here is all taped up, but um, it took a little while to do, just to tape up the bits that don't need the gold colour. So, uh, alright, okay, here we go, it's the first pass of the gold colour. That'll do for the first pass. All right, leave it dry till tomorrow. All right, so Iron Man has had a couple of layers of gold paint. I've painstakingly masked it off and put some gold paint in. The gold paint actually goes on quite thick so I'm a little bit worried about it because yeah it wasn't easy to do a light spray it um, basically yeah it just absolutely goes on completely utterly thick so um yep this fingers crossed when I take the tape off that uh, it actually turns out all right All right, so um, I've actually very painstakingly with the tweezers uh, taken off all the masking tape. Um, what can I say about the gold apart from it being semi-disastrous? You can, I mentioned earlier where the paint went on quite thickly, the actual propellant in the spray can uh, made it so that you couldn't do very light passes it just basically sprayed one thick coat on which I tried my best to work around you can see there and in fact everywhere really um, actual capillary action of small spaces underneath the masking tape actually drew the gold paint in um, so I, I had a look at where it's kind of failed in places and thought to myself it's not so bad that I need to just take all the paint off and start again. What I can do is spray some of the red into a little plastic tray and with a brush very carefully just go over the bits where it's uh, actually kind of spoiled. So um, it's not a total disaster, but yeah, it could have gone a lot better. Um, so yep, yeah, stuff like this happens. Um, and yeah, all you can do is just deal with it as best you can. All right. I'm going to definitely leave him dry for a long time. Uh, the gold uh, actually takes a lot longer to dry than the red, as I discovered. So, um, yep, yeah, I'm probably going to actually just leave him be for a couple of days, make sure he's completely dry before I start messing with him again. 
All right, cut to the next bit. Alrighty, so I've taken all the uh, the masking tape off, and I've actually I've gone over those little bits that um, I've kind of bled through under the masking tape quite disappointingly. Um, so basically, all I did was just spray some of the red paint into the cap of the can, and then just used a brush then to kind of get in there and sort of just fix all the broken bits. So now the um, the next step is I'm gonna put a couple of little silver highlights in kind of um, all the right places and um, yeah, we'll see what that looks like. Probably take him off the stand to do this, but uh, I can't be bothered. All right, so I've put some little silver highlights on it now. Um, it's got it in the kind of joints and stuff, so yeah, it gives it a bit of extra depth. So uh, again, I'm just going to leave this for a day or two to dry. Um, yeah, one or two little blemishes I probably should touch up, but um, yeah, it's going all right. All right, see you for the next bit. All right, so I've uh, hand painted all the kind of silver highlights. You can really see in the kind of the joints there of the elbow and the knee, little highlights in the side, this collar. So I've got my silver highlights in there. So really there's not much left to do now, except give them a bit of weathering, make those details pop. Uh, for which I'm going to use this regular old shoe polish. It's the kind of dabby dabby sponge type. Make sure it gets all in the looks and crannies and then sponge it off with a bit of kitchen roll. But before I do that, first thing I've got to do is actually take him off his base. So I'm just going to do that now. So this is one of those things that, again, can go a little bit wrong if it's not done right. So, um... It's best to work in sections at a time, so I'll just do kind of lower leg, upper leg, that kind of thing. Just do one section at a time. Um, get the uh, shoe polish in there, make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies. And then quickly, because this stuff can dry a little bit too quickly if you're not careful. So quickly but gently, making sure you don't uh, use anything too abrasive. Kitchen roll's fine. Just kind of dab and wipe it off. Um, Again, you have to make sure that you don't sort of wipe too vigorously so that you actually wick away the stuff that's in the cracks. It's a, it's a little bit of an art. It takes a bit of practice, but um, I'm just going to give it a bit of a go now. All right, so I finished putting all the low lights in. So as you can see, all the little crevices, the nooks and crannies, I've got a little darkening in there. That's using the um, the black shoe polish. So it just kind of makes those panels and all the little details pop. So uh, 
gonna leave this dry for a day just to make sure it's completely dry before I put the finishing touches, maybe a few highlights. Um, obviously things like the arc reactor need a little bit of attention, the eyes need attention. Um, so yeah, on with the next bit. Um, while I'm Actually, while I'm waiting for that to dry, I might do something with the base, because obviously it's just a very plain base at the moment. So I might, um, might uh, spruce that up a little bit. Okay, so I've marked out a rough pattern. This is going to be, I don't know whether you want to call it a landing pad, or I think they call it a suit up pad. Um, so basically, it's one of these very technical pads that kind of helps Tony Stark get his Iron Man suit on. Um, so yeah, so I've just marked a basic pattern. Now I need to sort of make some high spots and sort of work out how I'm going to give this a bit of bit of depth and a little bit of three D texture. Um, you can obviously see where his feet go, so I kind of need to work around that. Um, all right, so I'll just get cutting. So basically, to get these kind of raised textures, I'm just going to use some um, quite thin, it's only, it's less than half a millimeter thick um, polystyrene sheets. You can get this stuff at anywhere where they kind of do model railway stuff or, you know, any kind of crafty store, really. So I've stuck down those little bits of um, polystyrene that I cut out. I've already glued them down onto the base. Um, these little bits that I cut out um, are going to go on last because basically I want them to stay pristine and white and they're going to add a little detail, a um, little colour uh, difference. Um, I've also got some of this um, tubing. Um, so I've cut out some other little greeblies and I'll kind of stick them on. Um, I'm thinking something like that on each one just to give like a little bit of detail I don't want too much detail on the base because obviously I want Iron Man to stand out more but um, yeah I, want, I don't want it to be too plain either so um, yeah we'll cut to the next bit okay so I've got all those little greeblies all glued on and I think they've had long enough to dry so uh, time to give her its first coat of paint Okay, this is a technique I actually learned from a professional model maker. Essentially, when you've got something that's uh, a pretty flat, plain color, it can come off quite dull because it's not really, doesn't have depth or texture. So um, basically the, the technique is to, um, to use, obviously again, spray paint, you can do it with an airbrush, but essentially the technique is to do tiny tiny little dustings from a height and what that does rather than spray it a different color it just puts tiny tiny little flecks and it actually gives it a little bit of a texture so let's give it a go now so 
Just a very light dusting. You barely want to see any dots of colour. So that was a light dusting of black and I've got some leftover Tamiya. I think it's kind of like a light grey colour. Let's have a look. So a big dot going there, so I might have to remove that. I think that's probably enough of the light grey. Yeah, I think it needs a little bit more of the black. going to be difficult to see with this camera but you notice it's got some texture now it's a bit difficult to see with the shine this actually got a little bit of a little bit of light gray a little bit of a black dusting has made it look like the material has a texture now rather than just absolutely flat gray okay so um after putting the texture on top of the flat gray using the black and light grey uh, spray cans. All I've really done is um, had a quick pass with some some wash so you can see like kind of in the nooks and crannies there this kind of a little bit of a, a low light colour wash in there just to give it a, just to make the 3D uh, element of it kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, and then these kind of silver bits here um, on the draw. So um, literally just a pen just a paint pen, silver. So I've gone into those little holes there and I've just gone around the little circular greeblies with a silver pen, make them stand out a bit more. And then, um, yeah, I've just glued down the last of the polystyrene strips. I, th I think they're meant to be lights. I kind of based it on a, an image that I found online of uh, Iron Man's suit up pad. So I think they're meant to be lights. So. I just left those white and I've just glued those down. So that's pretty much um, the base finished. Okay, so while the um, the base is drying, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do some of these little highlights of so the, the eyes, the um, arc reactor, and possibly the kind of repulsor in his hand there. I'm gonna start sort of doing some little touch-ups there. Alright, so that's the little white touches uh, done. I'm just going to let that dry thoroughly before I start messing with it. Um, Alright, see you in the next bit. Okay, let's put him back on his base. Line up the screw holes if I can.
Alrighty, this is the final step. So basically I've just got some uh, clear coat matte varnish and I'm just going to give them an all over protective coat. Leave that dry for a day.